lactating cows and dairy herds and calves and heifers, we realize every farm is different. Uh, buildings are different, environment's different, management's different, and uh, therefore we as a company feel like we've got to a approach those uh, in an individual manner. And I think we've got an opportunity today uh, for a great example for Lambert to show you two different situations uh, and how we have approached those two different situations and then a third one that he's currently uh, uh, got going. Um, I'm not going to say a lot about Lambert for two reasons. One, I think the way we've got the presentation laid out, he's going to be able to introduce his family and his thought process and his team and so forth and what he's done. Second reason is I've had the opportunity to work for Lambert for about 12 years and we drove up to this from Ohio and I know that if I say something wrong it'll be a really long ride back home. Okay? <laughs> so uh, hopefully we've got everything in the message. But uh, three things that Lambert is passionate about, kind of Lambert's mission statement, is cows, comfort and longevity. Uh, community, and I'll talk a little bit about what he does with his uh, community, and then the environment and taking care of, of uh, the land and so forth that's been given to take, and, uh, or to take care of his cows and what he's done. So with that, I think you guys will enjoy this, uh, an analogy. One of the reasons I love working with Lambert, it's kind of like riding a roller coaster. You guys know how it, it leaves the station, and it's exhilarating, and it's exciting, and it's a fun ride. And then as it comes back into the station and slows down, you just get prepared to take a deep breath that the project's over. Well, imagine the roller coaster gets taken right back off again, okay? Uh, Lambert is always thinking outside the box. Uh, when he finishes a project, he's, he's right on to the next one, and uh, I think you guys will see that today. So with that, I'll turn things over to Lambert. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm not, I think somebody messed up because after the last uh, presentation, I'm not sure how much value I'm going to bring. It should have scheduled me before those guys. Um, but if nothing else, there's about 20 people here from Ohio that I can talk football with. Um, <laughs> so we actually um, moved um, 18 years ago from Holland. Um, my parents and I, uh, I grew up in Holland on a uh, dairy slash uh, sow farm. We milked 65 cows and had 180 sows. Um, pigs was never really my thing, um, even though I do have one running around the house. Um, uh, shouldn't be, but so so we decided to to look our he farm. Really, he really does have a pig. <laughs> yeah, not, not anymore. Not anymore. Um, so we started looking. You know, where where is the future going to take us? Um, 65 cows we didn't feel was, was really a future for us in, in, in the country there. Um, Holland's a very small country, very congested, so obviously not much room. Um, I could throw a rock and hit two neighbors' houses from the farm. So we started looking other places in, in Holland and other places in Europe. Um, you're dealing with a quota system at the time, so very expensive to relocate. We looked at a place in Canada ended up in the U.S. And, and the advantage of not being very smart is it don't take long to make a decision. So we said, you know, the U.S., the West is too lonely, the South is too hot, so we're going to be somewhere somewhere in that Midwest. Um, ended up Northwest Ohio. Uh, it's been good. Uh, it's an area where, uh, contrary to Wisconsin, very little dairy, which sometimes is um, tough. We don't you know, we don't have the resources in our area. Uh, our county, uh, I think nine dairy farms now, the county north of us, uh, four. So spread out, um, but good water, good feed. So that's where we landed. Um, so we started with this farm. We built a farm for 600 cows. Uh, started there. Um, it was a double 20 in Herringbone Parlor. Um, over the years, uh, expanded. Uh, so I was 18 when we moved here. Uh, since then, got married, had two boys. My parents are there. Uh, I have two sisters. One actually mucks goats uh, in Europe, uh, and the other one is in marketing, and she just uh, moved to New Jersey. Uh, I'll start out. Um, so Perina put together a video here um, as the uh, ambassador thing. Um, they did a very good job with that, so I figured we just uh, – Play that here, so you get a good, oops, a good uh, understanding of. There we go. 
Being a dairy farmer is kind of a way of life. Work truly is my hobby. I, uh, a lot of times, walk through my barn at night when everything is quiet and truly enjoy seeing cows do well. When you grow up on the farm and you know animals, that's what you've done your whole life, you can just see when cows are happy, when they're thriving. I grew up in the southern part of the Netherlands, which is very um, congested, right? The whole country is less than half the size of Ohio, and there are 17 million people there. I was 18 at the time when we moved, and I didn't want to wait for my parents because I was ready to go. I don't think that there is one cookie cutter way to dairy in a country this big. I think it is up to each family, each farm, to decide what is best for them, for their animals, for their community. We see growth as doing a better job with what we have before we think of growing in size. So we've worked with uh, Purina for uh, almost 15 years now, which is a very long time. We look for a partner, not just a supplier. A nutritionist doesn't just cover one part of the business. There's a relationship there. If we offer proper nutrition, we offer proper care, facilities, production will follow. We want our cows to live a long, happy life. So we built Fresh Made two and a half years ago where cows go when they reach four years of age. People are wondering why, why another farm? Why not just add a barn? Or, um, but once people learned that, that this was done with the cows in mind, everyone can get behind doing things that are better for the animal, better for the environment, it is a responsibility, I think, of every farmer who uses natural resources to use them responsibly. We always say there's nothing greener than farming where we grow a plant, we harvest that plant, feed it to our animal, the manure, the nutrients coming from that animal go back into the earth and it, it's a full circle. So it's cool to grow it in your community, for your community. Our mission has always been to produce a safe and nutritious product with our community, our environment, and our animals um, in mind. Growing up myself, I always knew that I wanted to take over the farm. Being able to offer the opportunity to my kids, um, that's what my parents did. They have worked very hard their whole lives to build a farm that could continue on in the future. So the whole idea of a family farm, I think, has always been building a legacy for the next generation. All right, so we started out with 600 cows, like I said, then that dairy over the year uh, expanded to uh, 1,400 milking. And then about four years ago, we built Fresh Made Dairy, like the video said. Um, we moved cows there, four years of age. Uh, we started genomic testing years ago, and, and that pretty much indicated that we were not getting the genetic potential. We, we were not getting the performance that, that our cows could um, produce. So we said, well, let's see what we can do, and felt that specifically on the older cows, you know, 18 years ago we built uh, six row barns and sand bedding, and we thought that was just it. Um, and now um, it showed us that those cows uh, we're limited, so building that facility uh, for older cows that, that maybe was a risk. Um, we definitely, with, with the support of uh, people we work with, um, I think it worked out very well. Those cows really uh, stepped it up um, and now are at their genetic potential. So now we're working on the next, because uh, you, know, you solve one problem and there's always one uh, other one in line. Um, so this farm was a full row barn, basically uh, pretty simple, double the square footage uh, per cow, white turnover, crossovers. Uh, we set this up as a flush barn, uh, pretty automated. So there are two people working there. Uh, there's no feed there. We haul the feed from the other farm. So we have one person milking in a double pen parlor. And oops, 
and um, one person outside. We're freshening at both farms. Some people freshen at one farm. Um, we've seen that uh, the way that was designed, that the person was out there anyways, bringing the cows up to the parlor, that person could keep track of maternity as well. And that's, that's worked well. So uh, the following video is, is a video of the same thing, except it, it talks more about the cow comfort and what we're um, trying to do there. My name is Lambert Vandermeg. Uh, my family and I run a uh, dairy farm in Northwest Ohio. Uh, we have two facilities, um, Vandermeg Dairy, and uh, two years ago we built Fresh Made Dairy, two miles down the road. My name is Doug Phillips and handle the day-to-day -day nutrition and overall management with Lambert Vandermeer. The home farm that was the original farm does great for first and second lactation animals. The stalls are big enough, they're comfortable enough, the cows use them. But his bigger mature cows just didn't lay down as, as much as they needed to. And as a result, we were losing efficiencies, we were losing milk production. Fresh made dairy is state of the art. When Lambert came up with the idea, we couldn't find anybody that had ever done it before, designing a facility just for mature cows. We did a lot of research. There were a lot of naysayers that said, you can't build a facility for old cows. You're not gonna be able to keep the facility full. So we built a farm where cows go when they reach about four years of age. And this farm is built specifically around those cows' needs. We were convinced over the years that especially our older cows would benefit from a different system, a system that was more spacious, a lot lower stress. We have twice the square footage per animal, so this goes into walkways, beds, the space in front of the drinkers, space to eat. These cows never have to look for a bed, never have to look for a place to eat. The whole system is built around the cow. We used to build barns for people. The cows that work hard every day produce a lot of body heat. We might freeze our tail off, but the cows are, are very happy. Essentially, those are marathon athletes in that facility. And as a result, the diet is designed to provide the calories, the energy that those cows need in order to produce the amount of milk that they produce, which is tremendous, but also stay in good health and breed back and Lambert's objective with that facility was longevity. And it's amazing how long we're keeping cows around in that facility. The other benefits here at Fresh Made is everything's automated. It's more labor efficient. It's a very sustainable system. And so the, the barn cleans five times a day. The walkways, everything is much cleaner, drier, which is better on the cows' hoof health. Ventilation is done through a uh, weather station that controls everything from fans to curtains. Feed is pushed up by a uh, robot that runs every hour. So there's very little people interference. And when you go out to the barn here, those cows are in their own little world. You can walk through the cows and they might look at you and wonder what you're doing in there. So no, that has really paid huge dividends. After we started this facility, we had actually added almost a year of lifetime to the whole herd. When we moved cows over here, those cows just took off. We like to see cows that are 12 or 13 years old and are still producing. It's amazing what these animals can do. When you think about it, you have an animal that is 12 years old that has produced a three or four tanker loads of milk in her lifetime and now her offspring, she has daughters and granddaughters in the herd. So that's pretty cool. So the cows, that's, that's obviously, everyone has talked about um, the cost of raising heifers and, and we've done this, we've raised way too many heifers and. Um, that's a huge financial strain, uh, trying to figure out uh, which cow um, is going to have a, uh, a longer productive life, obviously is a big, a big one there. Um, I'm just going to go through this pretty quick because the video already talked about it. So this farm now is four years old and um, uh, of course there's always things that, that you wish you would have done different, but, but overall it's, it's performed very well. Um, so now we're talking about uh, the next step that we're doing at the old farm uh, and uh, where we're actually 
uh, seeing second lactation now having a lot of opportunities that we're trying to uh, gain there. Uh, this farm set up with a uh, uh, collar system with milk meters. Uh, like I said, uh, the flush has worked well. There's a couple weeks in the winter that uh, it's no fun, but no, nothing is. Um, I think with these older cows, especially the hoof health has really been a big plus. Uh, we put in a, a prototype system, I can, this is down there, cooling beds. Um, years ago, I, I was at a conference and a uh, guy was talking about heat stress and how um, in, in certain parts of the U.S., you know, there's, if you think south, it, it gets hot. Uh, we, we seem to struggle, Ohio, you don't think heat stress, but we seem to struggle for about five or six weeks in the summer typically where we get absolutely clobbered if it's, if it's hot and humid. Um, so we put in a prototype system with cooling mats uh, that are buried in the sand under the cows, and then we're actually chilling water that flows through there. Uh, we've ran it on, on those high-producing cows. Uh, it, sh it showed benefit. Uh, it's a very expensive system. Um, I don't know where it stands right now. It was kind of a prototype deal. Biology ventilation is a, is a huge key with any type of barn. Uh, this is nothing new. Everyone's familiar with that. Labor efficiency, it's a big one. I mean, when we started thinking about uh, this farm, I was really worried that if you, you have a second site with a smaller site, then it's very easy to become uh, less efficient with labor. So we really had to think about uh, how many people could we have there, uh, how much could they handle. So our crops, so we grow most of the, about, oh, I'd say two-thirds of the forage needs. Um, the rest is, is done with neighbors on, on agreements where, kind of like the previous farm where um, we work with them on manure. They're a part of our manure plan. We're in the Lake Erie watershed, which Northwest Ohio, Lake Erie, that's turning into an ugly deal. So that's definitely uh, bringing a whole different set of challenges. A uh, couple of years ago, we built a new feed building. Uh, we were due the, the commodities barn was an open-faced commodities barn that we've been feeding out since uh, it was built for 600 cows. And uh, you know, 18 years later, you have different ideas. And so we just built a building that um, everything gets delivered in, except the um, corn silage. We go outside to go get the corn silage, but everything else is indoors, and that has really helped us with. Uh, shrink. So we're feeding both farms out of that one building. That's probably one of those deals that we should have done a long time ago. Uh, we, we try to uh, obviously, just like everyone else, uh, take care of our employees and um, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's a crucial part of the business. As you grow, it's, it's hard, I think, on, on management. Um, kind of that chicken and the egg game, right? Do you have management first and and then grow or do you grow and, you know, in ag we seem to just do stuff and figure it out. Uh, sometimes we should plan better, but, uh, you know, trying to have people understand that there's not a lot of us anymore that produce milk, so the more that we can do as far as community outreach and uh, those are things that uh, we need to tell our story. Um, the whole sustainability. When you say that, talk about the community or community groups or neighbor tours or visits that you set up. Yeah, so we've tried to do the, the we, we do a news, a quarterly newsletter. Um, we've done the, the uh, I didn't want to do the breakfast on the farm. There's, there's been a few of those around where we have 8,000 people showing up. And um, so we did a dinner deal on the farm. We've done some local stuff, and actually, when when we were planning to build Fresh Made, um, there was an opportunity that came up, and it's a local local bottling business uh, partner was retiring in there, and we, my wife and I, started talking to the other owners and said, uh, you know, hey, what's going to happen with this business? I've always thought that local brands are really cool. There's not many left. And so we said, if we could have something to do with that, then we're going to do that. 
vertically integrate. Um, that sounded good. It didn't go anywhere. So we said, well, if that doesn't work, we're going to build another farm because we feel that you know the production uh, left on the table here. And so we started building. And of course, halfway through the building process, you get a call, hey, that dairy bottling business, the guy's retiring and for sale. So we're like, yeah, what the heck? We'll just add something else. And um, so that's basically, you know, now nowadays, um, I don't know which generation it is, but um, you got to have a side hustle. So the the bottling deal, that's my side hustle. Um, but that's opened up a lot of, uh, I've had to learn a lot um, about how to deal with customers. Uh, it's, it's a whole different deal than what we're used to on the farming side. So that, that's been really good. Um, so now trying to deal with retailers who sell your product. I, I, I heard the previous guys talking about it. You know how you deal with retailers that sell your product and absolutely have no idea of what goes into uh, producing it. So that's really helped as far as the community uh, side of things. You know, and that's a big word that everybody talks about. And w what is it? I don't, I don't think anyone's ever been able to define it. So you just make up your own um, version. But for us, it's Obviously, on the farm, it's that we've known forever that farming is pretty sustainable. Um, and then on the dairy, on the on the processing side, for us is we tell our story positively. We try not to go into fear-based marketing. Uh, we talk to customers who want that. They want to print a label that talks about what we don't have in our bottle. And it's like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I want to print something that's not in there? So we decided we're going to take the uh, the high road on that and, and just tell our story what we do do, not what we don't. Um, so that's been a, a different angle. Um, on our processing side, which is a totally separate business from the dairy, um, but all that milk is sourced within uh, 20 miles. There, when, we, when we came in there, there was an 80-year-old business that um, – already had its own milk supply. There were 13 families shipping in there, uh, mostly multi-generational farms. And we said the last thing we wanted to do was, was to uh, boot people out and take that space. So uh, the majority of our milk is still going elsewhere. Uh, we said, you know, if we can pick up some growth there, then uh, we'd like to, like to do that ourselves. So, um, you know, great to have family business. My wife does uh, payroll and her parents are there every day. Um, um, I've always growing up in the family business and uh, that's I think one of the, the, the perks, right, that uh, interaction. So, um, so currently we're actually on a construction and I don't have that in here. Um, so at the old farm we're tearing down two buildings, put a new building up and uh, going to uh, the first robot. So that's the next step. So I think with that, I'll just open up for questions. And and I have a good report here, Mr. Woodhorn. You talked earlier about the difference you saw. We took a group of second lactations over two fresh made and, and how that kind of helped your decision on the robot. Yeah, I think for us, the, the, and I don't know what it is, if it's just one thing, um, but we, we had older cows, and when I say older cows, third plus lactations at both farms. And comparing those cows, um, fresh made was milking 10 pounds higher. Same feed. Um, so it had to be something in cow comfort. There were things that we did different from space to, um, you know, the, our interaction with the cows. Uh, at, the, at the other farm, we milk faster, so there's less holding area time. I think it's a big one. So as we went through that, we said, well, let's try the same thing with second lactation animals and see what their response is. And that was actually, that response was greater yet. So um, that's why now we're trying to figure out uh, how do we integrate robots. So the plan is that we're going to milk uh, our first lactation, stays in the six row barns, milk those through the double 23, which actually we're gonna take back to a double 20 herringbone, drop a person in there. Um, and then cows coming fresh between their genomic uh, result and what we know from them, the first lactation on milk speed, 
we're hoping to figure out which cow is a robot cow and which cow will go over to the other farm. So, uh, I don't know. This is kind of uh, new territory, so I, I don't know that I can tell you much about it. Questions? Sounds good. Let's call Brian. <laughs> If, if you guys could, we're going to bring a mic around just so we can make sure everybody hears your question. I apologize if you said it before, but what is the actual average age of those animals at Fresh Made, and then what what is their production? Yeah, so cows go there typically, and, and now that we're in the construction, nothing's normal anymore. Um, but the idea was that cows would go dry after the second lactation, calve in as a third lactation there. Um, and I think right now they're uh, right at uh, average age of six years. Uh, typically production, um, we'll be running a little bit over 100 pound average. Um, so those guys are definitely, we were never able to get that at the other farm on the same diet. Yeah, so how are we going to integrate the robots? Um, took a lot of smart people to figure that out. Um, so we're actually, the, the farm is going to, the robot part is going to be its own little um, environment. It's going to be a, a cross fan barn. Uh, that milk is actually going to be pumped up to, what are you trying to get at? Um, that milk's going to get pumped into the direct load system where the parlor is, so it's going to get tied in that way. But the building itself will be its own separate entity, if you will. Um, now I picture cows going in there. We're not going to have any dry cows in there. Dry cows will still get housed outside of that robot barn. Um, the plan is to freshen those cows, put them on the robot, a few weeks fresh, uh, and then at the time of dry, they come back out of there. So, I like I said, I uh, there's a lot of stuff here that uh, I've stored places, and uh, the biggest reason I guess for me to put those to start with second lactation cows is um, we think that we've done a better job with that new barn as far as cow comfort. So I think that will benefit the older cows more than first lactation, and then also obviously it's everyone. Um, milking older cows makes a lot of sense just from a production standpoint. So we're really trying to make cows live longer, uh, raise fewer heifers, and um, those robots just have them milk. No, no mastitis, no treatment cows, no nothing. Just, just milk high-producing cows. So I'll, I'll repeat to everybody. What do we do with the heifers? Um, so how do we breed? How do we make those decisions? So right now, we've always had our heifers custom raised. Um, they're at five different locations. We have two farms that take them from um, two weeks old, week and a half, two weeks old, up to uh, 350, 400 pounds. Then there are two farms that take them from 400 to a year, and then there's one farm that takes them from a year to spring them. Uh, we've always done that on purpose so that each farm is kind of uh, specialized in their own little thing. Um, and it's worked well. They all stay re relatively close. So we can um, we can check up on those better. Um, so now we're, we've been playing with it. I don't know that we've figured it all out. Um, like I said, that's what we do in dairy, right? We just kind of wing it and then figure it out later. But uh, so now we're... Um, We've tested, we've been doing with testing since uh, 2013. Um, so we've got a fair amount of information. We are using beef semen uh, on the bottom end. And when you really look into uh, the way we set our criteria, is we, we want a cow that, there's only two things I want out of the cows. Um, 
pounds of fat and protein and productive life or health. So I just want a cow that lives a long time and, and sounds simple, but. Um, so now we're, we're, we are using a little bit of sex semen on the top, 20% uh, then uh, conventional and then obviously B semen too. So really trying to uh, get those females the next generation out of the top end. Um, so we now have a better handle on our budget. Um, just like everybody else, we, we're raising way too many heifers and uh, in the market that you know, we have today is tough. Uh, but really, really focus in on, on cow health. And when you look into that and you see how those cows that um, have a higher productive life, for example, and BPRs, how much more milk they put in the tank over their lifetime, that's a big deal. Other questions? Thank you. Thanks for saying that. Appreciate that. Um, and, and that's, you know, personally, I grew up in a different country, and um, my parents always said, hey, you're, you're at home to work, but if you want to learn something, you got to go somewhere else. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so I did. I was 18. You know, I, I knew when I was 17 that we were getting ready to move, and, and their education system is totally different. And so... Um, I basically, I, I graduated general education and then went into a, uh, uh, a dairy program. But a one year dairy degree means nothing. So I go there and I was like, hey, I, I would like to do, I like to have a degree before I go. And the guy said, well, you can do two years in one. And I was like, well, that's still nothing. Well, three years in one would be t tough because in Europe you have to do an internship, basically one internship per year. So I ended up doing one year I did, um, and in three different farms on Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then I did a six-week international in Michigan. And honestly, that's that's where I learned most of the stuff. I mean, that's so yeah, a program like that's really good, I think, for um, kids in general. I'll give you guys a minute to think, um, for so we don't miss any questions. But uh, Lambert talks about winging it and and moving with the flow. I can tell you one thing he doesn't wing it on is financials. Um, and Steve Bodart, who is Lambert's accountant, is in the back of the room. Uh, some of you are familiar with him. Uh, there is a yearly budget. There is a quarterly budget. Uh, that budget is reviewed quarterly. Um, I get the opportunity to go to most of those, and that is the most enjoyable day of a nutritionist's life is to <laughs> get to go meet with uh, the accountant. But uh, I, I didn't... <laughs> I didn't want you guys to get the impression that Lambert wings it from a financial standpoint because you guys know the economy and, and what it takes, and they really do watch their numbers. So, Any other questions before we break up? Okay, with that, appreciate you guys coming. Lambert will be available in this room until approximately 3 o'clock. Um, if any of you want to talk individually with Lambert and by 3 o'clock you don't get an opportunity, uh, we are going to go right down the front main hall here behind the Land O'Lakes Prina booth. We've got a small room in there, cheese and crackers. You're welcome to come down there and we'll, we'll stick around and make sure Lambert gets a chance to answer all your questions. So thank you, Lambert. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys.